this is Landon Ritchie from Design Visionaries. And in this video, I'd like to show you how to add fasteners to an assembly uh, rather quickly. Um, the trick for this is that when you're designing a part um, and you need to add screws, and so these are going to be added in the assembly view, uh, you're going to be putting in each individual screw, screw and <clears throat> many times when you're working in an assembly, it's a very tedious, long, and boring task to sit there and put in a screw for every hole that uh, you're trying to fasten. Um, there's a design method you can keep in mind when making a part that has many holes that need to have uh, screws put in them. And for this, I'll show you. Uh, the first thing I'll do is I will uh, start with the hole feature, and I'm just going to create a sketch on this face where I'm going to put the um, where I'm going to put the screws. So I'm going to go ahead and start here, and it should bring me right into this sketcher. And once it orients, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put in some various holes. Um, actually, I'm just going to put in one hole to be honest, uh, and I'll show you why in a second. So first thing I'm going to do is I want to have this hole um, approximately, oh, why is this set to reference? <laughs> All right, let me uh, let me get, take that off. So whatever reason I had it set to reference, let me turn that off. Don't know why. Okay. So we're going to say this is just a half inch from this end and a half inch from this end, like so. And we'll finish, and then we're going to put in a hole here. It's going to be, uh, I'm going to use a metric uh, coarse M4. M4. Oh, this is threaded hole. I just want a, a screw clearance hole, counterboard M4. There we go. So here's here's the uh, hole. So go ahead and put that in. And next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch on here, <clears throat> and I'm going to add some more points. Uh, these are just the various places I'm going to be putting uh, my um, screws. So I'll just go like that. Maybe there, there. And maybe there's uh, something that gets mounted in here somewhere, like so. So we'll put those in. And uh, I'm going to use the, I'm going to put one more actually right over the top of this one. Like so, and I'm going to use the handy dandy um, vertical and horizontal alignment for holes. I'm so glad they added this. Um, it just makes life so much easier now that you can do this. Oops, automatic selection progression was off. Let me fix that. Turn that bad boy back on. I was wondering why it wasn't working. There we go. So and that, that right there will make your life so much easier trying to align these things. And then I can do a horizontal from this to this. And from this to this. And I'll just go around like so. Oops, that's okay. And we'll just put some more constraints on here. <clears throat> and we'll do a couple horizontal ones here. Like so. And you and you. And I want these to be aligned horizontally as well as you. And do some vertical ones between these, like so. Okay. And then. I just need to do some dimensioning. So actually I'll do a midpoint. I want this to be at the center of that, this, that, this, and that. <clears throat> I don't, yeah, and this and that. Okay. <clears throat> and then lastly, I do need to put a few dimensions on. So this is gonna need to be a uh, 0.5 from here. I don't need to put the 0.5 here because they're all constrained to this top corner one. <clears throat> I will, however, need to do it to the bottom here. So I'll put a 0 0.5 there. There we go. And then for this one, um, I do want to do a midpoint. So what I'll do is I'll draw a reference line. 
and use this reference line as my midpoint for uh, this, like so. And then I can just do it again right here. <clears throat> Create that as a nice reference. However, you're going to make this, uh, make your model, and you have all these holes you need to put in. Um, basically, I'm just making something to show uh, various holes. And then uh, we can decide on how far apart this is going to be. So we'll say it's a 3.5 by 2.5. Should be fine. There we go. And now the sketch is fully constrained. And notice there's only like four dimensions on this whole thing. The rest is using those nice horizontal and vertical constraints, which I absolutely love. I'm so glad. It was so lame to have to sit there and draw a line if you wanted to do that before and use the line horizontal one. <clears throat> All right, so now that that's done, I'm gonna finish that sketch. And now what I'm gonna do is, instead of just putting using the hole feature and putting a hole on every single one of these, I'm actually gonna use a pattern feature, <clears throat> and I'm gonna select general pattern. And the feature I want to pattern is this hole, but I'm gonna select it from over here, just so I'm, I know I'm selecting the right thing. The from location, is probably going to be the, the topmost hole. And then the two is going to be, and then this reference point is kind of goofy. And I don't know why it always picks the center of the feature, but you want that to be at the very top. This reference point is a little square. You want that to be in the very same place as your uh, start location. Um, it has, the reference point has a tendency to pick the very center of the feature. Um, so when it comes to holes, <clears throat> that doesn't always work properly, especially if it's counterboard. If it's a through hole, it can. Um, but for counterboards and features that are very uh, vertically dependent on where they are, um, that's not going to work right. So you need to make sure that reference point is on the top of the feature at the entry point of the hole along with the from location. Now we'll go ahead and specify a two. So we're just going to pick all the, all the little points. Um, we could just say, uh, yeah, existing point, whatever, and just start picking them, and you'll see it's putting a little instance square over it. What's going on? Oh, I picked a dimension for some reason. don't need to mess with that dimension. So we're going to pick uh, that, like so. And we'll hit OK. And as you can see, oh, I missed one it's up in the corner. Let me just grab that one real quick. Okay, so, oh, what did I do? I just picked the wrong thing. Oh, my gosh. That's what I meant. You got to make sure that you know you're, <laughs> you got to watch these dialogues. Make sure you're on the right one before you start clicking. Otherwise, you'll screw up like I did. <clears throat> okay, so I'll hit okay. And then we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and. Uh, exit back into the assembly here. Actually, I think it was in the assembly. Oops, that's okay. <clears throat> no problem. Um, so I have this plate has a lot of holes, and we want to put a screw in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create one. We'll just go to uh, assembly, and we'll go create new, and we'll say this is an M5 M4 screw. Um, I'll leave it in inches that way I can make it the work part. Uh, so I'm going to make that the work part. I'm going to import a uh, step file and I'm going to go to, as soon as it opens my file folder, I think the last place I had my file open was to a network drive, which I'm not on that network now, so it's going to hang for a second because I can't find it. But I have it in my downloads in here. Oh. Um. Well, I'll just pause the video until the thing. Okay, so I had to like manually force Windows to realize that network drive didn't exist anymore. <laughs> so in order for this thing to pop up. But it's up now, so I'm going to look for my step file. I have here is uh, this one, I believe. 
We'll go ahead and open that in. <clears throat> Let me make sure I'm still recording. There we are. All right. So I'm just importing a nice little screw I got off McMaster car. Only takes a million years. Yes, we know. Scale the part. Okay. So now I have a screw. So the thing about this is a little tricky. Um, when I made this pattern, this this was the original. So in order for this work to work, you can't uh, put the you can't fasten this fastener to that original hole. It's got to be one of these other instance holes. Otherwise, the the feature breaks. And I, I'm not sure what the point of that is. It maybe it's some kind of weird programming loop that it gets caught in. For whatever reason, um, don't fasten your initial uh, screw or fastener into the original uh, feature. So we're just going to go ahead and do the assembly constraints, use that new uh, align and lock ability, which is basically like a glorified concentric that locks it on and uh, rotation as well. So, and we'll just shove that on uh, one of these. Doesn't really matter. Whoops. I just put that on the wrong spot, didn't I? <laughs> Let me, uh, we delete that one and just reconstrain it. So we want that to go on there. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so I have a I have a nice screw. It's coming through, so it's going to fasten to whatever's on the other side. Great. Um, but I need to put screws in all these holes, and I don't want to sit there and have to go through each one manually, one by one by one. And I know that when you're adding an, an assembly, you can you can do a multiple add, but you still got to do it one at a time over and over and over and over and over. So to save all that effort, you can just simply go to a pattern component, you choose the, the screw, and change this to reference pattern. And look at that. Oh my gosh, it is already filled. It just, it saw the pattern that this was constrained to. It's like, oh, here's all the other instances. Let's put the thing in there. Boom, done. And what's great about this is if you have like a, if you have like a chassis or some kind of a sheet metal uh, body that kind of gets folded around, you know, in, in multiple sides. So you can use that same general pattern. Just do one hole and then wait until the end to do your to do your holes and use general pattern and put them in all the points around the, the sheet metal body or the chassis or whatever. And then when you come in to put your fasteners in and you know all those holes need the same screw, you just put one screw in and then you reference the the pattern that you made in the design and all your all your holes are filled with the screws it's just, just like that like magic and it's so awesome it saves so much time so again this is landon ritchie from design visionaries and this is the quick way to add fasteners to your assembly uh, for more tips tricks and tutorials like this please check us out on the web at designvisionaries.com uh, we have an nx tutorials section on there you can also uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube videos. Uh, thank you and have a great day.